Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down into bite-sized pieces today. Quick articles about how Bitcoin is beating everything in sight, especially the Dow S&P 500 and the Nasdaq indexes also. Crypto analysts predict imminent Bitcoin rally. Here's why a brutal breakdown might follow. And they're actually predicting anywhere from 10,000 to 3,000. So who knows? Also, someone moved 106,000 Bitcoin worth 700 million for 26 cents. And I just want to show you an example of a bad article, which is the three altcoins to consider in the time of world crisis. And after that, we're going to go over an actual feel good story at the very end. But let's jump into today's stories. So first up, let's check out the prices and see what we got. So this was from yesterday. Looks like Bitcoin is at 6960, 145 for Ether, XRP 18. Not too bad. Let's take a little refresh. And so, so, so 6881. Now I know that Bitcoin did jump up above 7,000. If it can consistently stay there, that's going to be good news. But right now we're just kind of below that. So let's take a look at the traditional market, see what we got. This was... This is over five days. So we got 2526. And you can see that uh, it's been going just not so great since the crash on March 12th. Up and down and up and down. Let's take a look over. What was it? Let's see what it is today. And uh, in the toilet. So markets are going down. Let's take a look at gold. So today, we're down about half a point. Last 30 days, down two and a half. But over six months, hey, it's up 8%. So if you've been holding for 30 days or six months, excuse me, uh, congratulations. So this just leads me to my next point, which is we're going to talk about the article, which is Bitcoin is suddenly soaring and smashing everything in sight. And that uh, makes me quite bullish, makes me quite happy. So it just talks about Bitcoin's rally was over the last few days, put it way ahead of the U.S. market gains with the Dow Jones Industrial Average, S&P 500 and tech heavy NASDAQ all treading water after data showed over 6 million Americans filed for unemployment benefits last week due to the coronavirus shutdown. And this is what is amazing to me. It's amazing to me that the S&P 500 and all these different traditional markets, they can just dump and just go down and down and down. Yet, cryptocurrency digital assets continues to either trade sideways or go up. So it is a nice, strong indicator. How long is that going to last? No idea, but uh, we'll see. For the first quarter of the year, Bitcoin recorded heavy losses, but didn't perform as badly as the major U.S. indexes. Bitcoin price fell 12% over the first quarter of 2020, outperforming S&P 500's 23% decline. The Dow's 26% drop and even Nasdaq's 15% slump. So if you take a look at it, Bitcoin has outperformed all these old time players and uh, it's going to bode well moving on into the future. So gold, the classic safe haven asset in times of uncertainty, only added about 4% during the first three months of the year. If you're Peter Schiff and any kind of gold bug, you're like, well, yeah, we're doing fantastic at our 4%. But do you really think that's going to last over time? Do you think that they're going to keep going up or maybe even sideways or go down? I don't see it lasting too much longer, but I'm a little biased because I'm heavy into crypto and that's just how it is. But what this says to me is this. Can you imagine the conversations that financial planners are going to have with their clients in the next 12 to 18 months? I mean, you're going to have people like Fidelity Digital Assets, which has 2.4 trillion assets under management. You got somebody like Ameritrade with 1 trillion assets under management. And places like Van Eck, with, which, which has a parsley uh, 49 billion uh, paltry, excuse me, not parsley, that's something you eat. So uh, that is uh, still a lot of money. And can you see them sitting them sitting all these people down, all their uh, clients and going, look, here's the thing. <clears throat> we have this new asset class. It's called cryptocurrency. Maybe you've heard of it. Very volatile. However, as volatile as it used to be, what happened in this black swan event with the coronavirus, with everything shutting down, with the United States having 30 to 40 percent unemployment rates, the S&P dropping in an unprecedented manner, uh, it actually did quite well, traded sideways. So if you want to keep investing in old world stuff, we can do that, Jimmy. Or what we can do is take a certain aspect of your portfolio, maybe, I don't know, 5, 10, 15 percent, who knows, 20 percent, and Let's put it into something that has shown incredible resiliency. What do you say? That sounds good. Let's do that. That is how I see it's going to happen. And it's, I believe in the next 12 to 18 months, that is what it's going to show. All we have to do as a community is try to make sure that Bitcoin and all, those, all the top digital assets don't tank. I don't think that's going to happen. But if we can not tank during this time, 
so much the better and it'll make a great case for store of value for these types of like DeFi to be the next big thing and uh, you'll have a lot of people funnel in. All right, let's move on. Next up, crypto analysts predict imminent Bitcoin rally, but there's a brutal breakdown which can follow and that's always the same thing. I'll every single different article you see. Well, it's going to go up, but then it's going to go down. It's going to go down, but it's going to come up. It's just, uh, I don't know, it just seems kind of ridiculous sometimes. But I'm just going to, instead of reading this whole article, I'm just going to just paraphrase. The whole thing can be summed up like this. Uh, tone base is bullish if Bitcoin can get above the 200-day moving average of 8,000. That's it. Uh, let's move down. Peter Brandt, this is what he said. Uh, he sees the potential for more upside on the horizon. He said Bitcoin is likely in an in ascending triangle that could bring the leading cryptocurrency to 8,400 in the short term. That's what Peter Brandt said right now. Peter Brandt, uh, legendary trainer, also said this. I had actually written to him on Twitter and said, look, uh, I got a question because I was doing a piece on him. I said, I'm going to do another piece on you today. This is on March 13th. And remember, March 12th is when everything went down the tubes. I said, because you said that you would bet that Bitcoin goes to zero after it fell below 7,500. Do you think it's a sure bet and you'd bet the farm or is this new bet like a 50-50? He said all along for the past few years that there was a 50% chance Bitcoin go to 100K or go to zero. Now, not literally zero because there will always be some demand for the hopeful. So maybe a thousand and not zero. I still feel that way. So it's kind of a little ambiguous, but when we were talking, it kind of seemed like he was like, yeah, Bitcoin's going to zero. Maybe not totally zero because there's going to be some suckers out there that's going to pay for it. But that's what he says. And uh, I like Peter. I mean, he seems like a good guy. Uh, makes a lot of predictions that, that come true. But uh, this this case is kind of wishy-washy. And uh, I don't see it going to zero. I see it uh, skyrocketing. That's how I see it. I don't know if it's going to skyrocket in the short term. Long term, that's me. I don't, I'm not uh, making short term plays. I'm dollar cost average guy. Try to just kind of plot along. All right. And then lastly, in this article, a prominent trader, prominent trader who predicted Bitcoin's drop below 6,000 agrees that Bitcoin may soon break above the 8K mark. This is Pendrudy. <laughs> Great. Also believes the global economic turmoil will likely hit the price of Bitcoin hard and bring Bitcoin below 3K. He states, amid a global financial panic, Bitcoin price aggressively attacks weekly uh, moving average 200 and bottom triangle line of previous chart. I see this might not end well as I thought as bearish potential of global markets is huge. I got a bearish target between damn, 1800 and 2500. In this case, weekly 20 uh, moving average will be broken and become resistant. Da, 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 da. Here's what I think. I think in the short term, uh, as we see more deaths and we see more infections with the coronavirus, and we see massive unemployment, and we see businesses going out of business because they have no money and they can't get back in. Even with the stimulus package, I see major problems and a lot of uh, turbulence coming into the markets. I see Bitcoin going down in the short term, but I see it rocketing back up afterwards after we figure all this stuff out. Look, uh, the United States, as uh, great as it is, uh, the problem is is to get the money in the hands of the people. I submitted all my paperwork and documentation as a small business owner to receive a stimulus check. And it's supposed to take two to three days. That was last week. There's no word on that. Now there's also a, um, it's called, bring it up here, Paycheck Protection Program. And that was that went live today. And every and we're, you're supposed to go to a bank uh, that is a representative of the uh, SBA, and um, just go there and turn in your paperwork. Well, I went there multiple banks, and guess what? They don't know what's going on. They don't know what's going on, and they are just directing me to just wait, and maybe it'll be on the website later. This this was uh, through Wells Fargo, a couple of different other lending platforms here where I'm at, and nothing. So this is. The problem I see is that the government is moving along, but there's just not enough direction. And you're going to see people have a lag of getting the money. And you're going to see different problems that happen with that. I see defaults in mortgage. I see businesses closing down. I see people not being able to afford uh, some basics and essentials. And uh, because of the inefficiency of the government, that's just how I see it. And when this happens, you have people who get a little bit of panicky. 
And then before you know it, they start taking money out. And we can see it right now. I mean, S&P 500, you see what's going on there. Gold is kind of going down a little bit. And uh, cryptocurrency, <clears throat> as well as it's doing right now, in the short term, I see, I believe it will go down. And uh, that's just how I see it. Now, what do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. That's just how I see it. Moving on. Next up, someone moved 106,000 Bitcoin worth 700 million for an incredible low fee of 26 cents. That's the whole article. Uh, nothing really to say about that. It, it's just that uh, it was you know, less than a dollar. Great. So I'm not going to go over the whole thing. So it's just the whole article is right there. Here's my thoughts. And that is that I always saw, I, I always believed that, that Bitcoin at some point would be a store of value. Now, my confidence is a little bit shaky on March 12th, I have to admit. But when I took a step back and looked at it, I go, well, what makes it so much better than gold? Well, uh, it is fungible. It is transferable. It is censorship resistant. You cannot take it. It is an open source. It is decentralized. And oh yeah, you can move this. Can you imagine moving $700 million worth of gold uh, across the city? What you would need to do, the kind of uh, security you'd have to have, not to mention the trucks that you'd have to have just to, just to transport it across the city. Now imagine moving across the world. So extrapolate that by a hundredfold, thousandfold. And uh, this is just one example of why Bitcoin's a better store of value. Now, I see it moving forward as Bitcoin and gold will be stores of value. And it'll be uh, Bitcoin will be the younger generation, gold will be the older generation. And as the decades move forward, you're going to see more of a switch to Bitcoin than gold. Gold will always be around. It's been around for thousands of years. Don't discount it. But uh, as time goes on, younger generation will pick up Bitcoin. And that's that. Moving on. Next up, this is an example of a very bad article. And these are the types of articles that I have to go through every single day to give you guys actually some good information. So this just pretty much... I think this is all for advertising. I use the Brave browser, so you see these big blank spaces, no ads. And uh, I highly encourage you to grab it. If you don't uh, uh, have a link, there's one in the description, and uh, just use my affiliate link. I get like a kickback of like uh, 50 cents or something crazy like that, something huge. But uh, yeah, there's no ads. And uh, if you want to, if you want ads, they'll pay you to watch it in the basic attention token. I turn them off because I could care less. Anyhow. Moving on to this article, these are the ones that suck. So it says here, here are three altcoins you may need to consider during this time of crisis. Ethereum, EOS, and Binance coin. I'm like, okay, I'm listening. Uh, it just says Ethereum. Ethereum, I mean, it just gives you some, some basic information here. But Ethereum is currently in high demand and by its low supply. It can bring many gains with the next bull run. And that's all it says. That's why you should invest in Ethereum. Do you think that you should invest Ethereum 10,000, 10, 20,000, 100, even 100 bucks just because of that, that sentence? No. No, you shouldn't. I mean, you should know exactly what Ethereum is and why it's going to be big. To me, it's big because everything's built on it. Uh, you got ERC20 tokens like crazy. And it's, gonna, it's also dominating DeFi thanks in part to MakerDAO. And if you haven't seen my video, I did a deep dive into DeFi and BuyDAO and uh, stable coins. And it's a video from yesterday, very long. So if you got nothing to do, if you're on lockdown like me, check that out. It's like an hour. Uh, next up, it says EOS. EOS is still an altcoin with a high potential. And it says here, if big players such as Amazon and Uber move to the blockchain, EOS will be their focal working point. First of all, what makes you think that they need to do that? What makes you think Amazon and Uber need to go to the blockchain? Is there anything they have to do for the blockchain? Uh, maybe Amazon does for like tracking different things. I could see that. But why would they go to EOS? I, and there's there's no reasoning why. It just says, well, it could, maybe. So it's like you see that, you're like, what? that just makes no sense. Just explain to it why. Why? You have to say why, right? These are the things that make me crazy. And then lastly, it talks about Binance Coin. As Binance is one of the top cryptocurrency exchanges, which offers more favorable rates in the market, BNB is set for immense growth. Now, this one is mostly true. I must admit, so one out of three, great. Uh, and I see it, I see Binance coin going up, not just because it is the Binance coin and Binance is, is on a tear as they uh, buy up everything in sight. They just bought CoinMarketCap for 400 million. They just bought, uh, what's it called? The uh, Indian Exchange Wizard X or something like that, which is, they bought that when, uh, Cryptocurrency was banned in India, so great job. And they bought Dapp Review, which is a decentralized application platform, kind of like the Apple 
uh, Apple Store, but it just has a bunch of dApps. I mean, these guys are all over the place. And now I did a, a video yesterday on this thing called Baidao, and Baidao is DeFi built on the Binance chain, with, but it's collateralized with the BNB coin, which will lock up more of the BNB. Now, I talked about this project. I got some. I got some red flags with their team, but uh, it sounds like a good project. But you have to be aware that I went through 2017 when ICOs were all over the place, and you probably were too. And you remember all those crap ICOs that came about? Well, I used to read so many white papers, I go crazy. So this to me, it sounds like a good idea. I mean, it makes sense, but how can you really know? So first of all, you look at the team, you look at what that could help and bring this this billion dollar industry to fruition. I'm not knocking on them. I mean, look, uh, different companies did great things. Bill Gates did pretty good with Microsoft. He was a young guy. Steve Jobs and Wozniak did pretty good with Apple. So who knows? But uh, I see Binance doing big things, especially with all the acquisitions. So there's that. Uh, that's it for today's video. I just want to do one feel good story. And this is Ripple Labs co-founder recovers from coronavirus. So Chris Larson made a full recovery. There's the man right there, billion dollar player. Good for him. And he sent out a tweet and he just says, hey, thanks everybody. Uh, just got over the coronavirus and uh, looks like he had some antibody transplants. That's a good, that's cool. Um, I had heard that this is actually going to happen. So people who had already uh, recovered from the coronavirus, the idea was to uh, uh, draw their blood, extrapolate the antibodies, then put those into those antibodies as plasma into the people who are infected with coronavirus right now, as they would help to fight it off. So it looks like that's what he has. Because so the cool thing about this whole article was this: his announcement pr provoked a flurry of response, and for once, for crypto Twitter, almost all of solidarity. After all, whatever your stance on Ripple Labs or XRP, we're all in it together when it comes to fighting coronavirus. And that's true. And I thought it was a great article. And it just goes to show you that all this different venom and hate that we fling everywhere, really got to understand we are a family. Uh, you may have a brother or a sister, and I can guarantee you didn't get along with them when, they, when you grew up. But as, uh, as you got older, you got a little bit more chummy, a little bit more uh, family-oriented with them. Now, same thing here with the cryptocurrency verse. People spew hate towards XRP, towards Bitcoin, not to Ethereum. Everybody seems to like Ethereum, towards Tomato Coin or whatever. Uh, but when it all comes down to it, we're a small family. And uh, this is just a prime example of when we really need to rally around each other. Not just, I mean, for the, for the coronavirus, true, for the different things, but just to expand our reach, our realm and uh, get away from the uh, partisanship that is plaguing our community. And you can see it's a perfect example right here. I mean, Chris Larson beats coronavirus, we all rally around him, right? Uh, now you may not believe in XRP, I mean, I mean, I think it's that great, but um, maybe we should just tone it down a little bit and be a little more kinder to each other. All right, so that's it for today. Thanks for sticking with the rants. If you like this type of video, uh, videos. There's going to be two months going to pop up to your left and right. They are curated for your viewing pleasure by YouTube. And uh, that is it. So thanks for sticking with me. See you on the next one.